Since 2008, as a general movie-going audience, we've been following the multiple misadventures of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Because of the multitude of marvelous superheroes throughout the MCU, we've seen our fair share of death. I'm Dan with Wicked Binge, and this is the MCU Phase 1 Kill Count. With the kill count being relatively new here, we should go over a few rules. Firstly, we will not be counting animal deaths, unless they're sentient, preferably talking creatures, which does not include hammer drones because they run on programming. Secondly, we have to see the person's body. It is impossible to know how many people are in any car, plane, helicarrier, etc., unless we see and count them prior. Finally, we're only counting the mainstream movies up until the end of Phase 1, with that of course being the Avengers. This is part one of a three-part series that counts all the kills in the MCU, broken up by the phases. The first film in the franchise is starting our count, that, of course, being Iron Man. It starts with billionaire playboy philanthropist Tony Stark in the Kunar province of Afghanistan. While in a convoy of soldiers heading to a presentation of some sort, he is attacked by Ten Rings terrorists. When she opens the door to the Humvee, Ramirez is shot and killed, and not too long after, Pratt is also shot and killed while protecting Stark. When Jimmy exits the car to protect Stark, he is shot and killed with a wide array of bullet holes covering the outside of the Humvee. We see another three soldiers shot and killed by the terrorists while Tony is investigating his surroundings. Right after this, Tony tries to escape and gets caught in the explosion of one of his explosives, an event that would lead to Tony becoming Iron Man. He is then captured by the Ten Rings terrorists and forced to build his famous Jericho missile, instead deciding to build his first Iron Man suit while working with Ho Yinsen. While building an Iron Man suit in a cave with a box of scraps, Tony has the prison door rigged to explode, killing two terrorists in the resulting explosion. With the Iron Man armor completed, Tony gets quick to killing, seemingly killing seven terrorists with his heavy metal punches. He crushes another terrorist with a door, and then one more terrorist with a strong punch. A second terrorist accidentally kills himself when he fires at the armor and the bullet deflects, killing him. It is not long after when Tony finds Ho Yen Sin, who has been shot by the Ten Rings terrorist. The two exchange a heartfelt conversation before he bleeds out. After, Tony steps outside and is met with what looks like about 17 terrorists who shoot at him. Tony wastes no time in incinerating the lot of them, adding a significant amount of bodies to the count. After getting home from Afghanistan and informing the world that he will no longer be making weapons, I am shutting down the weapons manufacturer division. Tony starts working on his Mark II Iron Man suit and then eventually his Mark III armor after a lengthy amount of time. Tony flies over to Afghanistan again, where we see a terrorist kill three civilians who were trying to hide. However, we can't confirm any more deaths at the hands of the terrorists in this scene because Tony's arrival stops the execution of another civilian. Upon his arrival, he sends a terrorist flying with a single punch into a wall, most likely killing him. He then repulsor blasts another three terrorists who all seemingly die from these highly concentrated energy blasts. He then bags another six terrorists with his hidden shoulder guns, killing them instantly without harming civilians. After he flies away and heads to the Jericho missiles, he does blow up at least one tank, but we can't say how many people were in it. However, we can count another seven terrorists who were caught in the explosion of the Jericho missiles he destroyed. It is later revealed that Obadiah Stane is working with the Ten Rings to kill Tony Stark when he arrives at their camp. He takes the Mark I armor and has his guards round up what seems to be around 24 terrorists and their leader Raza and executes them just off screen. After Stane takes Tony's heart out of his chest in hopes of killing him, he creates the Iron Monger armor, setting off the finale of the movie. After creating the suit, Pepper arrives with S.H.I.E.L.D. agents to arrest Stane, but in his new armor, he successfully kills three S.H.I.E.L.D. agents, one by launching him across the room, and the other two by crushing them to death. During his fight with Tony, he also kills a civilian by launching them off their motorcycle to use as a weapon against Tony. But Obadiah Stane doesn't last much longer when he is electrocuted to death and then dropped into the arc reactor, causing a massive explosion. The movie ends with Tony revealing himself as Iron Man. I am Iron Man. Probably the most overlooked movie in the MCU is the second one, that being The Incredible Hulk. Bruce Banner was laying low in Brazil because of a variety of events that led him to hiding his Hulk outside. After experimenting with gamma radiation using himself as a test subject, he kills two scientists when he hulks out for the first time. 
After Bruce's trail is picked up by General Ross, he sends in Emil Blonsky, and while running away from them, Bruce runs into a tough guy leader. Bruce transforms into the Hulk and throws him into a wall, killing him on impact. It is also implied that he kills one goon when he grabs him and pulls him into the darkness. It doesn't take long for Hulk to start wiping out the forces after him, as he crushes the head of one soldier. He then slams another soldier against a wall and seemingly kills another four soldiers by crushing them with a giant tanker. We don't see any more death until Bruce is back at Culver University, and he is once again ambushed by soldiers sent to take him down. He transforms into the Hulk, sending a chunk of wall in front of him flying and hitting one soldier, killing them. He is then attacked by a Humvee that we can see had at least two soldiers in it when he crushes it repeatedly. Despite the multiple explosions and flaming cars, including the one he slices through with a thrown chunk of metal, no soldiers seem to die. After the battle at Culver, Bruce and Betty head to meet Samuel Stearns, who has created a cure for Bruce's mutation. With Bruce cured, Blonsky and Ross arrive and interrogate Stearns to get Bruce's blood. After Blonsky finds out about Bruce's blood, he stabs Kathleen Spar in the crotch and kills her, forcing Stearns to give him Bruce's blood, even though it would create an abomination. Mixture could be an abomination. After Blonsky becomes the abomination, we see what seems to be a soldier thrown through a wall and into another, killing them. We also see a body on the ground while the military is looking for Blonsky. We see a civilian completely decimated by a car the abomination throws, as well as four more that he sends flying by swiping at them. After crushing a rocket shot at him, he chases down the two soldiers and two officers in the Humvee who shot at him, using a taxicab and its driver to crush them, killing all five. With these civilians dying, Bruce can no longer stand by and he jumps from the plane, miraculously transforming into the Hulk to fight Abomination. When Hulk arrives to the fight, we see our final kill of the movie, with Abomination throwing a civilian into flames behind him. Hulk and the Abomination fight, and eventually Hulk defeats the Beast, but doesn't actively kill him, leaving him alive for future movies. With Hulk escaped and the Abomination defeated, we see none other than Tony Stark confront General Ross in a bar, confirming the shared universe. With Hulk's excursion out of the way, we visit Tony Stark once more in Iron Man 2. The movie begins in Russia with Tony Stark's press conference airing in the home of Anton Vanko, who is currently dying of an unknown illness or old age. He reveals his secrets about the arc reactor to his son and tells him he has every right to Stark's fortune, kicking off the path of Whiplash, who wants revenge on Stark. With Tony revealed as Iron Man, he is now facing the idea of selling his tech to the military because of the supposed threat of other countries making similar suits. Tony pulls up a screen of North Korea and we see a North Korean soldier is shot and killed by the malfunctioning suit. We then see another failed suit attempt when an Iranian soldier explodes in a malfunctioning suit. Tony then reveals that there is no need for him to give over his tech because most countries aren't even close to ready. We don't see any more deaths until Whiplash shows up at the racetrack that Tony is driving on, scoring a kill almost immediately, slicing a racer's car, and causing him to crash against a wall. We then see another three racers who crash into each other and explode while trying to avoid Whiplash. Whiplash is then locked up because of his attack on Stark, only to be broken out thanks to the machinations of Justin Hammer. After breaking out, he walks into a security guard, who he snaps the neck of. He is also responsible for the death of an inmate, who he knocks out and leaves to die in the explosion as he walked away. After hiring Whiplash to create Iron Man's suits and vanquish Tony's legacy, Tony is busy getting drunk, leading James Rhodes to don the Mark II armor and subdue Tony. The next day, Tony is approached by S.H.I.E.L.D. for an offer, but since he's hungover, the conversation doesn't go well. I'm sorry, I don't want to get off on the wrong foot, though. Look at the patch of the eye. He later uses his father's research to create a new element and cure his poisoning, leading to the creation of the perfected arc reactor. We later catch up with Whiplash, who has taken Tony's advice to heart and upgraded his arc reactor. We can see two guards to death behind him during his call with Tony. Then, Justin Hammer reveals his new drones, alongside War Machine. It turns out Whiplash has full control of the drones, and while Tony deals with them, Black Widow deals with what looks to be seven guards that she actively kills. The others are subdued. After Tony and Rhodey deal with a wide array of hammer drones, Whiplash comes to the field. The three of them fight, but it ends with Whiplash down on the ground after being severely beaten by Tony and Rhodey. Whiplash decides to activate his self 
self-destruct, killing himself after his defeat. With Whiplash defeated, Tony is once again approached by Nick Fury, bringing the movie to a close. While Tony dealt with Whiplash, the world of Asgard is explored in the next movie, Thor. The movie begins with a crew of scientists investigating natural phenomenon led by Jane Foster when they encounter the titular Thor in the desert of New Mexico. We are then launched into a flashback narrated by Odin. Said flashback begins with the Frost Giants arriving at a Nordic village and using their casket of ancient winters to freeze a boat amongst other things. It is revealed later that the casket doesn't actually kill anyone it freezes, so we won't be counting any kills yet, although it is implied that a Frost Giant crushes one severe when it crashes onto the camera. The fight scene between the Asgardians and the Frost Giants is very dark and hard to see, but we count about 20 deaths here alongside the King of the Frost Giants. Although it is implied that many more died at this battle, it's hard to tell how many die here. We flash forward to where Odin informs Thor is getting celebrated as the heir to the throne, where, meanwhile, a few Frost Giants slip into Asgard to obtain the casket. One of the Frost Giants kills one of the Asgardian guards with a blade made of ice. Ice. It is also implied that the other guard is also slain by the Frost Giants. But these three Frost Giants don't last very long as they are incinerated by the Destroyer armor. This causes Thor to head to Jotunheim so that he can find out why the Frost Giants were in Asgard. But after a Frost Giant calls him a princess, he knocks him hard with Mjolnir, seemingly killing him. After that, he, alongside Loki and the Warriors Three, take out what looks to be another 39 Frost Giants. Then, Thor utilizes his power to make an entire ice shelf cave in, taking out what seems to be another 46 frost giants afterward. After this, he is sent to Earth and stripped of his powers and his weapon. I now take from you your power! so he must go and obtain it by proving he was worthy. He met and became friends with Jane Foster and her crew, and they found a lead on his hammer. It was being held by S.H.I.E.L.D. Thor tears through the S.H.I.E.L.D. facility, but does not kill anyone in it. Instead, he fails to lift his hammer and is captured. He is then lied to by his brother Loki, who tells him he is forbidden from heading back to Asgard and that he himself had been crowned king in his stead. However, when the Warriors Three and Lady Sif arrive to take Thor back, Loki sends down the Destroyer. Within moments of activating, the Destroyer wastes no time and incinerates two S.H.I.E.L.D. agents. It doesn't take too long for Thor to prove himself a true hero and destroy the Destroyer, getting ready to head back to Asgard to defeat Loki. Heimdall breaks free from his icy prison and kills two Frost Giants who were guarding him, adding them to the count. Meanwhile, while Lufre prepares to slay Odin, Loki shoots him in the back with a blast from his scepter and then incinerates him on the ground, killing his real father to protect his adopted one. Loki also gathers the last of our kills by forcing the Bifrost to build and destroy part of Jotunheim, killing what seems to be around 12 Frost Giants. Now, we all know Loki doesn't die at the end of this movie, as he pops back up very soon. But now, we jump back to the past with Captain America, the first Avenger. We flash back to the 40s in Norway, where two church keepers enter a church. One of them gets crushed underneath a wall that a bulldozer goes through. After Schmidt grabs the Tesseract from its hiding place, he shoots and kills the other church keeper in the chest. We then jump over to America, where Steve Rogers is unable to join the military because he's too weak and small. The scientist, Abraham Erskine, invites Steve to the military with Project Rebirth because of his spirit. Abraham Erskine then injects Steve with the super soldier serum, but he is shot to death by a Hydra spy after he steals some serum. As the spy escapes, he shoots and kills two soldiers and shortly afterwards, one civilian. Not long afterward, the spy's confidant is shot to death after firing at two loiterers who are quickly killed by the spy. As the spy tries to escape, Peggy Carter shoots and kills the Hydra driver, crashing the car. After a long chase scene, Steve catches the Hydra spy, who bites down and swallows a cyanide pill, killing himself. After this, we jump over to Germany, where the German soldiers are reprimanding Schmidt for not providing enough for Hydra. Schmidt says he has harnessed the power of the gods and proves it by utilizing a Tesseract-fueled gun to disintegrate three German soldiers. Somehow, the military decides to utilize their super soldier as a performer for active duty servicemen, but he learns that Bucky's unit has gone missing, so he feels the need to save them. He drops down into a Hydra-controlled territory and slams a Hydra soldier hard enough to send him flying. 
so we'll count him. Kill counting Steve's infiltration is not easy because Steve is a hard character to tell when he kills something. He does knock a lot of soldiers unconscious, but we can't see any killing during the time prior to freeing Dugan and the rest of Bucky's squad. When they start escaping is a different story. We count four POWs gunned down by Hydra soldiers. We then see Jim Morita snap the neck of one Hydra soldier to steal one of the Tesseract weapons. In the background of the scene, there are two Hydra soldiers dead on the floor. After Dugan starts up the tank, we see what looks to be three uncounted Hydra bodies, which are added to the count. When we switch the view to inside, we see two more Hydra soldiers shot to death by allied forces. On the pretty bad digital camera footage, we also see one more deceased Hydra soldier for the count. The second set of footage adds another three bodies to the count, which we assume haven't been counted prior. We then see Captain America backhand a soldier hard enough with his shield that we'll count it, followed by a pretty strong kick that adds another soldier to the count. Schmidt starts the self-destruct countdown, and we see Steve send one more soldier flying with an attack. Steve then kicks a soldier over the railing of a balcony, sending him hurtling to a crashing death. We hop back outside with Jim Morita and the man with the Tesseract gun, who automatically add another two soldiers to the count, one by gunshots, and the other with the Tesseract gun. We also see a dead body that Morita picks his gun off of next to them, so we're counting them. While we do see another shot fly off in the direction of a soldier, we can't confirm if that one was a hit, so he doesn't go on the count. We then see what we assume is a dead body next to the grenades, so we're adding them. When the grenade is thrown, we see what looks to be four soldiers killed in the resulting explosions and gunfire. Fire. Meanwhile, we see Zola escape with his research, while Steve rescues Bucky and Schmidt grabs the Tesseract. Outside, Dugan blasts a guard tower, which catches what seems to be only two soldiers caught in the kill zone of the explosion, and then they escape from their entrapment. The facility then self-destructs, but we can't say for sure how many, if any, were still caught in it while it did so. Captain America and Schmidt face off and we find out that he's a super soldier as well, and he takes off his fleshy mask to reveal he is the Red Skull. With Red Skull and Zola escaping, but the base destroyed, Steve earns the respect of his higher ups and gets a chance to fight as Captain America, creating his own personal team of Howling Commandos and getting his iconic shield from Howard Stark. We then begin a montage of his team at work for the next two years trying to defeat and dismantle both the Germans and Hydra. Through Throughout the montage, despite the fighting, shooting, and explosions, we see very little death. We can say that one soldier does die when he is hit in the face with Steve's shield and falls out of a tree. After an exploding tank and a scene of Steve looking at maps, Bucky scores another kill when he shoots a soldier with a sniper rifle. During a scene where Steve is fighting off some Hydra soldiers, we count around six seemingly dead soldiers on the ground. We then see Steve throw a soldier off the side of a relatively large tank, so we're adding them to the count. We catch up with Red Skull, who is not taking his losses well, and kills one higher up with his laser pistol just off screen. Steve and his crew then come across a large train that they got on to stop the next Hydra mission, which leads to Bucky adding four more soldiers to the count. Steve adds a body to the count when he hits the heavy soldier hard enough with his shield to send him flying. Bucky then drops off the train, but we do learn later that he's still alive, so he doesn't go on the count. Zola is captured and gives up information on Schmidt so he may live, while Schmidt prepares for his final plan. Hey, Hydra. Steve then prepares for the final showdown as well, leading him to finish Hydra. During his motorcycle chase through the woods, he seemingly kills two soldiers using a rope deployed from his motorcycle. At the speed they were going, this seems entirely possible. One more soldier is incinerated and then ran over with his own bike, and another is flung off his bike and killed. He then kills the final two with an explosion localized on one of their bikes. We then watch as Steve seemingly adds another 11 to the count by various means, ranging from explosions to throwing them off a tank. Steve is captured by Hydra and lets Red Skull prattle on to him. Then, utilizing his reflexes, puts a soldier in the way of Red Skull's blaster laser, killing him while the Howling Commandos jump in. While Steve chases after Red Skull, eight more soldiers are put on the count when they are shot and killed by the Commandos. It also seems there's one in the hallway, but we can't confirm because it is shown for just a moment and not long enough to get a good look. In the hallway, however, we do see three Hydra soldiers and two allied soldiers killed. During the war scene, when the assault team moves in, we see another 39 bodies added to the count, killed in too many ways to list. 
While Captain America is pinned down by a flamethrower guy that Peggy kills, we see an uncounted body in a different hallway. In the hangar, while chasing down Red Skull, the Allied soldiers manage to kill three more Hydra agents trying to escape. In the hangar, we also come across a really hard scene to count, but it looks like another 11 bodies are added. Steve makes it onto Red Skull's plane to stop his bombings, and kicks one soldier off the balcony and onto our count. He then throws a knife into the back of another soldier, killing him as well. He then manages to open one of the plane's holds, dropping the bomb and a soldier hanging onto it into the ocean, followed by a second. While holding onto one of the planes piloted by a Hydra soldier trying to kill him, the other soldier flies into the plane's blades and gets shredded. He then ejects the pilot and we never see them open a parachute. Red Skull and Captain America have a duel in the plane until Schmidt grabs the Tesseract and is ported off into space, although he isn't dead. Then, the plane crashes into the ocean and Steve is frozen, bringing us back to where the movie started and everyone thinks Steve is dead. Howard finds the Tesseract and Steve wakes up in the present day, although Steve does ram two people through a wall and knock some people down, but they're seen moving afterwards so they can't be counted as dead. Nick Fury arrives and the movie ends. The culmination of Phase 1 is here, and we finish it with none other than The Avengers. The movie begins with a speech from a minion of Thanos known as The Other, about how Thanos will have the universe and humans burn. We catch up with S.H.I.E.L.D.'s testing of the Tesseract, and it opens a portal to space, from which Loki arrives. Loki doesn't waste time as he adds seven S.H.I.E.L.D. agents and scientists to the count through various means, but we also see what seems to be about five bodies on the ground that we hadn't seen Loki kill. Loki then uses the power of his scepter to take control of the mind of Hawkeye and Selvig while Fury tries to stall them, although he is soon after shot but not killed. Maria Hill and S.H.I.E.L.D. start chasing down the escaping Loki, and Loki has no problem adding one S.H.I.E.L.D. agent to the count by disintegrating him with a beam from his scepter. The car then crashes, killing the driver as well as stopping some more S.H.I.E.L.D. agents from chasing them. Soon after, the S.H.I.E.L.D. base explodes, however, it's unknown how many, if any, people were still inside. When Fury's helicopter goes down, he notes that he has men down, so we'll be counting the two helicopter pilots we briefly saw onto the count. In the meantime, Fury and Coulson start assembling the Avengers, consisting of Black Widow, Captain America, and Bruce Banner, while also trying to convince Iron Man to join despite his protests. Meanwhile, Loki and Hawkeye arrive in Germany, where Hawkeye adds two security guards to the Count via arrows to their throats. We then also add Heinrich Schaefer to the list when his eye is gouged out by Loki for his plan. Loki then tries to make a group of Germans kneel before him, but he is stopped by Captain America and Iron Man and then captured. Thor then arrives and steals Loki away, trying to convince him to give up on his plans, but he refuses, leading to Captain America, Iron Man, and Thor fighting each other. Loki is then locked up in the helicarrier, and the infighting between the Avengers begins, but Hawkeye blows up one of the external engines, sending everyone into a frenzy and unleashing the Hulk. While Tony and Steve fix the busted engine and Thor fights with the Hulk, Nick and Maria have to deal with Loki's soldiers, who lob a grenade into the room and kill one S.H.I.E.L.D. agent in the process. While the soldiers enter the room, Fury kills one, and Maria adds a second. While defending the cockpit, we do see Fury add another body to the count when trying to figure out how to stop the Hulk. Then, two soldiers try to destroy the helicarrier motors with a grenade, but Steve knocks it out of the air and throws one soldier over the edge of the helicarrier to their death. Steve and a soldier get into a shootout, and Fury adds another soldier to the count in the tried-and-true gunshot method. Then, Hawkeye adds seven S.H.I.E.L.D. agents to the count through his explosive arrows. This leads to Loki finally escaping, the helicarrier losing altitude, and Thor being trapped. Hawkeye and Widow start to duel while Loki tries to kill Thor, but Phil Coulson arrives to stop Loki, only to be stabbed through the back and killed. While, yes, he is alive in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., we're only talking about the mainline movies, and he seems dead as ever in those. After Coulson's death, Fury gives a rallying speech so the team can get together and defeat Loki and the Shatari, leading to the final battle. The Battle of New York begins after a battle of wits between Loki and Tony, and the portal that leads to the Shatari to Earth is opened. When the Shatari start invading, Tony seems to explode and kill about 32 of them when he launches his rocket volley. And while the Shatari seem like they want to do something to the humans, they only add one civilian to their count prior to being shot inside the diner. Black Widow arrives in a Quinjet, 
and utilizing his aerial movements, Tony causes three Shatari to crash against a building and explode. Black Widow and Hawkeye don't slouch, however, because they kill another 18 Shatari with the Quinjet's guns. But Loki shoots down the Quinjet, and Cap, Hawkeye, and Black Widow see a Shatari Leviathan. While the Shatari have terrible aim, they do add two more civilians who are caught in the explosion in the background. Steve goes to save the civilians, while Hawkeye and Black Widow hold off the Shatari, adding three to the list with a singular arrow. Widow adds another Shatari to the count with a bullet through the head while talking to Clint about Budapest. Meanwhile, Cap adds two Shatari to the list that he beats to a pulp while chatting to the police. Cap then regroups with Clint and Natasha, Thor arrives as well, and collectively they add another 14 Shatari to the list. Bruce then arrives on a motorcycle, and Tony brings in the Leviathan that Hulk crushes and kills, leading to the iconic Avengers turnaround. With the orders received, Hulk is told to smash, and he doesn't take it lightly, adding about nine Shatari to his count near immediately. Smash. Thor takes his duty to bottleneck seriously and adds what looks like 30 more Shatari to the count. Hawkeye adds another 3 Shatari without even looking, and then he, alongside Tony, add what seems to be another 15 shortly afterwards. Widow then adds another Shatari to the list before commandeering an alien vehicle and killing one more but keeping one alive to steer with. Tony takes out another 6 Shatari before landing next to Captain America where the two of them take out another 7 while working together. While flying up the building, Tony takes out another 4 and Clint adds a 5th. He then fires another arrow that kills 3 by dropping them into the nearby Leviathan. While atop said Leviathan, Thor and Hulk take out a combined 19 Shatari as well as the Leviathan. Inside the bank, Cap adds another two Shatari to the list, as well as stops a bomb from killing civilians. Nick Fury is told by the Council to nuke Manhattan to stop the creatures, but Fury doesn't do so, because he has faith in his team. We then jump back to the fighting. With Loki chasing after Widow, Hawkeye fires an explosive arrow that kills Loki's Shatari driver. Then Widow abandons the ship, leaving her Shatari driver to die so she can fight with Loki. Hulk then beats up the puny god Loki, and Widow tries to deactivate the space portal with the help of Eric Selvig. Thor then adds another three Shatari to the count by throwing them off their speeder while Tony tries to deal with a Leviathan. Tony is knocked out of the sky while Hawkeye adds another two to our count. Hulk adds four to our count before facing down a squadron of them. A rogue plane with a powerful nuclear missile leaves the helicarrier, so Iron Man goes to stop it, killing six Shatari along the way. Thor and Cap add another six shortly afterwards, mainly because Thor crushes them with a car. Widow starts closing the portal, so Tony takes the nuclear clear missile and places it inside the portal, a supposed one-way trip. His suit powers down, but he manages to launch the missile at the Shatari mothership, destroying it and stopping the invasion. With the mothership destroyed, we see nine Shatari power down and die around the Avengers. With the Shatari defeated and Loki successfully captured, the Avengers go get shawarma and take a day off, a fitting end to the phase. At the end of Phase 1, we bring our total count of kills up to 656 total, which is a shocking amount of kills. But let us know in the comments section if you agree with our count, and tell us what we should cover next. Remember to hit that notification bell and binge more of our videos. But most importantly, stay wicked.